All right, folks, I'm joined by Ryan Hurst from GMB Fitness again. And this week, I'm going to be picking Ryan's brain on about creating constraints in your training for more creativity with your movement. And this is something that I first got exposed to by Ryan back in 2016. I was at a workshop two weeks ago, and uh, the guy, Stefan Kranick, was talking about that concept a lot. And uh, I wanted Ryan to come on and just basically explain why it's something that he taught us back in 2016 and why it would be of benefit for you to maybe explore this as well. So we'd love you to take it away, Ryan. 2016, holy moly. That's a while ago. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, let's let's jump into it. Um, so this is one thing that, that I've played with over the years. Um, my coaches uh, from when I was little, <laughs> um, including in my martial art, this has been something that was presented to me. And um, yeah, I, I really, I really like it. Now, let's, let's take a little look at what we're talking about here. So um, what this is, is basically restricting and giving yourself restrictions um, in order for you to get creative and find solutions. And I think that it's not something you just jump into. It, it can be in the beginning, of course, but generally you will have had your foundation set. So you'll have those movements, if you will, where you're extremely comfortable with those, you have confidence in those movements. And in order for you to either further um, comprehend those movements or to look for other options, then what you'll do is you'll set restrictions um, in order for you, again, as I mentioned, to get creative. So let's, let's give an example. So let's say um, that we have... Um, let's say the squat, okay? And so I mentioned the squat because everyone has an image of what a squat is. Now for this particular squat, I would like for you to look at it as an unloaded squat. And what I mean is that you don't have a barbell, you're not holding kettlebells, you're not holding something that places load on top of you, unloaded. And I would just like for you to get in the deepest squat that you can get in. One way that we can look at squats, and this is not restricting ourselves, this is just in general, is that we squat down and we stand back up, and we squat down and we squat back up, okay? Well, restricting yourself for me can be, for example, let's restrict ourselves and force ourselves to only use a squat and look at the bottom portion of a squat. A lot of people say, okay, so you just sit in a squat. But what I'm going to do is say, all right, the restriction is that you can only use that position. But what we're going to do is we're going to play and see how many different ways we can get into that position as well as out of that position, because obviously in order to get into it, you have to get out of it. So in this way now, it's not looking at any other movement in terms of we're going to add this and we're going to add this. No, we're simply going to restrict ourselves in thinking that you're only allowed to play with getting into that position and out of that position. And so this way forces you to get creative and possibly come up with things that you might not have thought about before. So instead of me telling you exactly what to do, I give you a puzzle, if you will. And this puzzle is for you to figure out. And there is no right or wrong answer. There's simply just you exploring that. But if I were just to tell you, okay, I just want you to play around with this movement, sometimes people uh, will be will get confused. And they'll say, well, how do I play? Uh, what should I do? Well, by giving a restriction in terms of you can only use this position. But then on top of that, give you a task. And that task being going in and out of that position as many different ways as possible. The restriction of having you in that position allows you actually freedom 
because you don't have to think about anything else. You're only thinking about that particular position, then trying to solve this particular task at hand. That's only one example, and there's many, many, many examples that you have, but this is something that I actually play around quite a bit with in my martial art. So rather than looking at a technique, you have a task, and there is, again, no right or wrong answer, like simply re re restricting yourself to a particular position um, and trying to solve that task that you're asked to do. And I just find that this creates more creativity. Um, it can also, because you're limited in terms of the specific position or movement, it's just freeing in my mind. And um, again, it just allows you to be yourself and not think that it has to be done any particular way. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. And I have found personally that a lot of my breakthroughs in my movement, uh, especially in the way that I view things, has changed considerably thanks to this particular um, drill, if you will. Yeah. Like just as you were talking there, the big thing that I hear a lot and, you know, it improves, I think, when people start following more of a skill based practice like you taught us during the apprenticeship with GMB um, is boredom. So like exactly. You know, right. I've, right. I've done the same movements. I've, I've squatted like I'm sick of squatting. So, you know, I think it would be cool to maybe give even some more examples there. You could literally just have squats and push ups like yeah for someone watching like how could they i know you get already give a bit of an example of the squat but maybe like mm -hmm. tempo and speed or do you have any ideas there that sure, people could sure. could implement absolutely so if we we're looking at let's move um outside of the squat and let's look at a at a um a a movement that is more locomotor related so locomotion movement in this case what we'll do is we'll use the bear and so the bear, for those of you who don't know, imagine being on your hands and your knees and you simply push your butt up into the air. And so with your butt up into the air and your hands and your feet on the floor, it resembles sort of an A position. And from there, you take one step forward with your hand, one step forward with the opposite foot and just continue traversing forward. And you go backwards, you can go side to side. But Basically, let's just look at going forward. So what we're going to do is look at traversing forward, or moving forward. And as you mentioned, we can play with tempos. And so what we want to do is we're restricting ourselves to just doing this one movement. But we want to see how in how many different ways we can perform this particular movement while keeping our butt up into the air. Again, it's not actually a variation of the movement in the terms, in the sense that from that position, we'll drop our hips and do X movement. No, no, no. We, we are trying to keep that A position, restricting ourselves to that A position. But in motion, how many different ways can you do that movement? And so, for example, like you mentioned, tempo. Um, another option, another option we actually have um, to throw it out there, okay, would be position of the hands. What if we were to still keep our butt in the air, but bend our knees what if we we're still keep our butt in the air while walking forward but bend our arms what if we were to do that by using tempo and quickly going forward but pause where we have one hand off the floor one foot the opposite foot off the floor it's going to test our balance our control it's going to test your flexibility obviously strength but there are so many different ways you can perform this movement while still sticking with the movement and so this you mentioned boredom is how we can move beyond that boredom but as well learn things that we might not have taken notice to and bringing better awareness to the body and saying or maybe giving ourselves what if situations what if i were to turn my fingers out while i'm performing this movement what if i were to do this um, as quickly as I can and then try and slow down as you know quickly as I can so basically those tempos and putting the brakes on very quickly so this again is an example of how 
I can take a movement that we might have become bored with because we've done it a gazillion times and then restrict ourselves in order to make it new again. Yeah, I love that, mate. And just like it's, uh, I guess you're being more curious about how you can approach exactly. things. And that's what it is. And like, you know, I like to say, keep it playful. And so, um, <sighs> And this also people, when they hear play, it's just think of a kid and doing stuff. But I mean, really, if you think about a child, a very small child, I'm not saying we should be children, okay, and act like children. But what I do like about children is that they're not worried about working out. They do something mm -hmm. for the sake of doing that thing, if you will. It's it's you know, throw their arms in the air and turn around in circles, you know, until they're dizzy and they fall and they're tired, you know, or like my dog, like running around and, Hey, I'm tired now. I'm going to lie down, you know, like they're not thinking of workout. And so that's really in terms of looking at movement. I think if we can start moving outside of the box by sometimes restricting ourselves and putting ourselves in a box um, through that creativity through that playfulness, uh, we find new patterns, new options, um, again, new things that we might not have thought of before. Thanks to that. Yeah. Let's, let's just say someone has elements and they're just feeling pretty, they're just kind of fed up with whatever, with life's going on and they're, they have elements mm -hmm. day 20 is on and they're like, Oh, I don't want to do this. So can you, cause you know, obviously the program off by heart. So like, could you give them some, uh, options they could do maybe they just set a five or ten minute timer they explore bear frog or a monkey what would be some things they could do with that to make it more um exciting or explore curiosity with those uh, options yeah absolutely so you mentioned this before but it's tempo i think tempo is a great one um especially in the, the program i'm saying all the time slow it down the reason i say slow it down is because i just want you to do the movement slow it's because when you slow it down, you bring greater awareness. Uh, when you are able to control the movement at any part of the movement, the beginning, the middle, or the end, um, that allows you to get strong, improve your flexibility and control. And so that way, when you speed it up, the movement, um, you own it. Uh, it doesn't work the other way around. If you just do things quickly, uh, you tend to kind of blow through and you can kind of fake it, if you will. So that's why I say slow. But if when we're... Um, looking at the bear monkey frog or crab and we just set our timer and let's say that we set our timer for like three minutes just keeping to the basic air quotes um, movements in there so the basic bear basic monkey basic frog or basic crab going forward and backward how can you perform that at different tempos um, quickly going into a movement but pausing slightly how slowly can you place your hand on the ground or maybe how quietly, how softly can you place a hand, foot on the ground when you're moving and then look at tempo. So how quietly can you place your hand on the ground when you're going quickly? How quietly can you place your hand on the ground when you're going slowly? And then any mixture of that as well, when you're going through, I mentioned this before, but pause in midway through. So let's say that you're going from the monkey and you're turning. And as you turn uh, to place your hand on the ground to go into crab, can you pause midair? Yeah, this is tough. It's a lot tougher than people think because the momentum is carrying you in there. But as I mentioned before, if you are able to control yourself in these movements, that means that you have the strength in your body to be able to hold yourself in that position, which is really cool. And so just looking at those two things right away, there's actually three things, but tempo, how do you place your hand and or foot on the ground and then pausing midair is huge. And I'm not talking about performing a, a strictly strength move as if you were you know, holding your, your body up into the air with simply your arms without having your feet touch the ground. I'm not talking about that, like a handstand sort of thing. I'm talking like you have one hand and one foot on the ground and you just bring one hand off of the floor and you pause there slightly. That's a, 
that's a good core exercise to be honest like something like that if you think about it that way again i'm not trying to say you know use this as a core exercise but when doing this you will feel this in other parts of your body that you might not have felt as much uh before and so those three things tempo um how you're placing your hand and feet on the floor and pausing um mid movement yeah i think as well it's it's a nice thing when you start doing this type of training like you have these comfortable positions that you go into automatically and i find yes. like oh i'm i'm going into that comfortable position so like i think if there was actually a cool drill we did at the weekend it was doing the bear but it was partner resistance so someone was like kind of yes. wrestling you and pulling Love you that. off yes that's great so it was really cool and i was yeah. like oh yeah i can see where i you know i'm going into my comfortable place and then my partner yep. would like shift it and i was like oh there's such a a weak link here absolutely um, that's really so that good. Was, yeah yeah and then just different speeds as well i think that i like to do things slowly but then i can kind of go too slow and then i've not my explosiveness sure. is neglected so right exactly yeah it's uh yeah i think it's just cool for people to listen because it's when you start thinking this way you can't be bored like you just can't with your exercise yeah that's Exactly. So when people say that, they're like, Ryan, how can you do the same movement for years yep. upon years? Because I've never mm -hmm. done the same movement. And people are well, where, what do you mean? I'm like, well, the other thing, if you really want to get deep is that oh. there's I'm always good. going to be a slight, did I lose you? I lost you for a second, mate. Sorry. Can you repeat that? Right. Okay. <laughs> We're never, ever going to perform a movement the same. There's always going to be a slight differentiation in how we perform a movement. It might look similar, but it never is similar. And if we are able to bring awareness to that, then we might see. Sorry, man, I'm after losing you again. I think it's my internet. <laughs> oh, man. You see. Am I back? Yeah, you're back again, mate. Okay. I'm going to go to hotspot just to be safe. In a sec. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, I think it's back now. awesome you can you can continue i'll cut this out <laughs> be there i'm back i'm back okay you cool. can hear me now yeah i lost you awesome there. yeah cool also awesome, yes so i mean if we if yeah, if we really want to go deep, I mean, there is no such thing as being able to perform a movement the exact same um, that you have done before. Every single time you perform a movement, it might look similar, but there's going to be a slight uh, difference in how it's performed. It's just the way it is. And so when people say that you need to make the movement perfect, um, I, I get why they might say that. I just say try to make it beautiful. And if you just try and focus on making it pretty and beautiful each time, then it's then it's going to bring better awareness to what's going on. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure, mate. And like just one last thing about, around that is uh, this week I was really busy with work. So I was sitting loads and I went to the gym Dude. yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I was doing like... I've been doing a lot of back squats recently, like real slow tempo. Nice. So I, I, I'm I, very clear with where my depth is and, you know, my, my hips feel quite open as well. And I was like squatting and it was like a quarter squat. I was like, whoa, I, I can't go down at all just because I'm so jammed up today. Sure, so I think that's sure. a really, that awareness for people as well. Like we're, we've been talking about this in previous episodes as well. Just being aware of like what's going on from a, a stress point of view in other parts of your life, yes. or if you've been traveling or yes. really, really stuck at a desk, you're Absolutely. probably going to be more glued up at your hips as well. 
for yeah for sure yeah Awesome, mate. That's everything I wanted to cover with you today for the Great. constraints and creativity. So cool. awesome, man. 